All right, folks, we're right here from Melbourne with us today. We have one and only Kobe Farhi of Offenland. Asalaamu As Alaikum, brother. How are you doing today? Alaikum As Salaam. Uh, I'm doing very good and uh, happy to join you. Uh, thanks for having me. Anytime, my man. Now, listening to this album, it's, it's always a feeling in me that whenever Orphanland releases an album, it kind of becomes a landmark of, of peaceful nature of your music lyrics and how do you inspire people around the world i mean this is not the first time you and the guys have released a, a revolutionary album but time and time again you guys are doing it you guys are taking your own time to write an album and then you release it i want to ask you a very simple question is what is a simple takeaway from every album that orphan land releases which acts as an inspiration for the future albums Ah, uh, it's a very, very hard question. Uh, I guess that we always look at the world and trying to think how can we reflect uh, the way we see the world in our music. It becomes more difficult in every album because we are doing music now for 26 years. And um, you always get to think how shall we do it the next time. The music is not a problem. When it comes to the lyrics and the concept, I'm always getting into and think how will I attack it this time? How can I tell it? What should be the angle? Because the last thing that we want to do is we, we don't want to recycle ourselves. We don't want to uh, sound like something that we've said before. We always like to reach new levels. Uh, uh, so every album that we take, for example, I look at always one, I always think how can I be better than that? And I get a feeling with the new album that we did our best album so far. I just hope that the fans will think the same way. But I feel that the composition, my vocals and everything is on a new level this time. Absolutely, man. While listening to this album, first of all, the, the title itself um, has a very deep meaning. I mean, I come from an, from an Islamic background, so I know what exactly you're, you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. But... The, the the lyrical approach you have on this on this record is phenomenal you are exploring a lot of things and especially what you see right there in the middle east now you see it worldwide isn't it now we see it happening worldwide be it a religious point of view be it hatred be it anything we're seeing it so it's it's good to see that how one you know a band like often land takes it and 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 it's meant for positive uh, you know, to spread peaceful instead of, you know, induce hatred. So when I look at it from that point of view, you guys are transcending the music as an art with peaceful messages. What was your inspiration or what was your uh, idea or goal for this album in general when it comes to the meaning behind Offenland's great, great discography? Uh, I was thinking that... I was looking at the world and I was thinking that I'm pissed off with many things uh, when it comes to this album. And uh, of course there is the message of unity, but I was also thinking how can I shape the people? How can I make them leave, you know, some of, of, the, of the slumber that they are in? And, and because I always have anger towards uh, politicians. I have a lot of respect towards religion, but I also have a lot of criticism toward religion of our times. Uh, uh, I have a lot of criticism for the media. And I figured out that in this album, I'm going to be very angry about the people. And I will, I will explain what I mean. Albert Einstein, he once said that the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who do nothing about it. Okay. Which means, I will give you an example. Imagine that, uh, I don't know, someone is doing, let's, let's take, for example, a Muslim terror attack in Europe. Now, imagine if all the people after a terror attack, all the Muslim people go to the street, raise signs and say, this guy does not represent us, he is not one of us, this is not our Islam, this is not what Islam is about, and we reject it, and we are against it. When they don't do it, the people look at the terrorists and they think that this is the face of Islam, which is not the truth, which is not the truth. When, when they sit at home and don't do it, he, this guy gives the reputation for Islam. 
Islam. If they will do it, people will understand. Look at this majority of people, they say that this is not Islam. So I am angry with the people that are not doing anything. This was just an example, I can give you many more examples. Um, now, look, look at the media of today. I, you are from India, so I cannot ask you this question, but when I do the interviews today, I always ask people from Europe. I ask them two simple questions. First question, and I tell them to answer me with yes and no. I ask them, do you know that every year 70,000 kids are being kidnapped in India for the purpose of pedophilia, for the purpose of taking their kidneys, for the purpose of being beggars? A huge amount of kids being kidnapped this year in India. Do you know about it? They say, no. Second question, do you know who is Kim Kardashian? And they say, who doesn't know who is Kim Kardashian? And, and that's my point, right there. If we are living in a world where the world, people, everyone knows who is Kim Kardashian and what is the size of her ass, but you don't know about kids who are being kidnapped in India, there is a problem here. And there is a big problem here, and I'm angry because of that problem. And it's a problem from the media, and it's a problem from... Uh, this. The, the whole concept of the album is made out of a story that was uh, an ancient one from the Greek philosopher Plato. Did you hear about it? Yep, I have, I'm aware of that. Yeah, so Plato wrote the allegory of the cave, and uh, the allegory of the cave is basically a story that he was writing 2,500 years ago. He, he wrote it because the people killed Socrates. He couldn't realize how can you kill such a clever human being? How can you kill that man of wisdom, the guru of knowledge? The philosopher, how can you kill him? And he realized that humanity is being sick with something. Because if we look on our history, so the Greeks killed Socrates 2,000 years ago, but then you look about the pattern. Jesus Christ was killed the same way, and Mahatma Gandhi was assassinated, and, and uh, Martin Luther King being assassinated, and Che Guevara being assassinated, and Prime Minister of Israel, who was this close to make peace, Prime Minister Rabin, being assassinated, and only Arab president who did peace, the first Arab president who did peace with Israel, uh, President Sadat from Egypt, is being assassinated. Every time, the, the people, they kill those leaders because humanity is addicted to the darkness and they don't want to get out of the Plato's cave. And this is a pattern that you see for thousands of years that they're doing it. This is why we call the album Unsung Prophets and Dead Messiahs. Because we kill those people that come to help us. We kill them all the time. And um, so we're very angry this time with, with people and we want to shake I mean, We want to shake people. That's, that's the purpose. Totally, man. Because, you know, no matter how technologically advanced we get in this world, we still are, you know, where we're supposed to be we're not there. Exactly. Imagine that thousands of years we took things on, on this wheel and now we have spaceships flying out of space. Technology is so advanced. Why humanity stay the same and return? It's like it's like a loop of today. And the politicians, they like it when we are weak. They like it when we are arguing each other, when we don't have power. And the media, they like it when we deal with Kim Kardashian and not with the kids because the, the angry kids of India, they will not sell newspapers. And this is a tragedy because I believe human can, humanity can do more than that. So, so the whole album is about it. Of course, it's not only the Middle East, which is a disgrace what's going on in the Middle East, but it's the whole world this time. Yeah, this album. I was about to ask you that because I do find the vocal approach on this album uh, and I got to give it to you, like you said, that you pushed yourselves on, on, on this album, especially when it comes to vocal, because you have a range, like you mentioned, and, and that's what I felt even in All Is One, that there's a range in which the band is playing and your vocals and your melodies, everything is well confined within the boundaries of what the, the 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 scope is written but on this album i really felt that you pushed a lot and in fact made me even um, appreciate the fact that even though you're singing higher it's that the moment when you when i as a listener i'm able to connect to your 
to your vocals even though it's on the higher range not everybody likes high higher right i am i i i, I don't prefer my metal to be on a higher note but when i listen to to you on this album with with such higher notes i felt comfortable yeah uh, me, me too because i don't like the i mean i i like Judas Priest the Rob Alford but i never think i should sing that way uh, i prefer more you know opeth or uh, the bands that sing in on a low range in a way but I, but when i went up the, the great thing that happened is that a lot of emotions come out of my voice uh, so it made my voice to be even a little bit more emotional and and that was a beautiful thing because i'm not singing in a technical way so if i sing high the emotions are higher and that's that's maybe why you feel comfortable because it's full of emotions and it's not just technical you know and so that's that's maybe the case and that's also why i feel very happy about it indeed man i want to ask how was the feeling in the band after yosi you know um, left because this album is the first one after that so how was it in the band because obviously he was the lead guitar player and and i'm well versed with his musical style and you guys are a family together but how was it for you guys this time with ken as well as idan coming in to the picture and writing it uh, how was the vibe uh, what was your goal behind because everyone knows yosi because of his tone so i'm sure it must have been challenging for you to uh, not stop yourself instead go ahead and now we have a record which is coming out and that sounds phenomenal um i've always said that the band the spirit of the band it's it's stronger than any member of the band um i've always said that orson land is bigger than kobe or yossi when yossi uh decided to leave the band it, it was a shock you know we were like fairly for 22 years he's been a guitarist of the band um but i realized that orson land is something bigger than any one of us and we never had one mastermind yeah yossi was the lead guitarist but he was never the mastermind of the band orphan land is not a band of masterminds like uh, i don't know michael could be a mastermind of opeth uh steven wilson could be a mastermind of porcupine tree yossi was not that kind of mastermind to orphan land he was a lead guitarist but i am very much involved and the rest is very much involved this is something we do together so when he left the band, I knew that I had a challenge to teach Ken and Idan about the spirit of Orphan Land and what is Orphan Land and what Orphan Land is looking and how we compose music. And once they understood it, we succeeded to create an Orphan Land album. And I even think we succeeded to create the best Orphan Land album. Because if you play a guitar and I will teach you about the spirit of Orphan Land, you can write music for Orphan Land. And that's that's what I have learned from the departure of Yossi, and uh, I'm very happy to see that it came true because many fans were like saying to me, "We we are afraid uh, to hear what what's going on with the band after the guitarist left." But many people or journalists that listen to the album they say we were a little bit scared, but we hear it and we feel it's good, it's alright. So. so uh, yeah, we, we are still good friends with Yossi. I sometimes drink with him coffee uh, and we meet each other. But um, today we are very happy he took his own way and we are very happy with Ida and Han and I believe that Orphan Land is really on the right track. Awesome, man. I, I'm going to conclude by asking you one simple question. You know, every band has this pinnacle of, you know, of an album, which is like, which some people say it's untouched. And that goes the way when when I come across often land fans say Mabul is that or never ending way is that. And then band cannot just stay there. Instead, you like you said, you have to move forward. You have to focus. You ended up releasing all as one, a powerful record. And now with Unsung Prophets, another killer album. But for those fans who are confined within a certain boundary, who always say no, no Mabul, no Orphan Land. You know, you're getting my point? So what is your opinion for such uh, such uh, you know fans who are who don't look beyond a boundary who don't look that there's a life outside the box as well you know there's also fans from the 90s that say uh you should create another sahara album 
Sahara is an album from 1994. It's the first album. And what, what I can say is that I'm flattered that there are people who like Sahara the most and there are people who like Mabul the most. And if they cannot find anything new that we will make to be as good as Mabul or Sahara, for example, we can always gain new fans. And uh, those new fans can like the new material and they can like the old material because we cannot create another Sahara. We was 18 years old and this was the way we think over there then and now this is what we think now. There are people who follow the band and trust the band and there are people who get stuck with one album. Mabul is, is the most successful album until now. Um, I, I have to respect that. Um, I think it's a pity that people don't get a chance sometimes to new material because some bands becoming better and better on every album. And I think that Orphan Land is one of those bands uh, that it's always becoming better. Uh, we didn't release any album that many people say it's a failure. You can always find every album you have its own fans. Some people will tell you all this one is their favorite. Some people will tell you Elnora Alila is their favorite. There's not a one album where all people say we don't like it. We don't. So I think our fans our fans should give a chance to everything we release because we do it with a lot of passion and a lot of thought and a lot of our hearts is in it. So they should give a chance. So yeah, it's not going to be another Mabu, but it's Orphan Land. It's something you should check out and you should let it sink into you. Absolutely, man. You guys don't force yourself. That's the beauty. Six albums in a span of 20 odd years. That totally says why you guys take your own time and don't want to release anything which is like half-assed or not properly or diluted you guys take your own time kobe good luck with the release man i wish this album you know crushes every possible billboard out there reaches masses because this is something that people need to listen to this is something people need to understand and i can only you know just pray from my heart that this album just goes global we definitely are going to catch you on your upcoming European tour. So once again, thank you very much, brother. Thanks a lot for everything, man. And uh, let's meet on the roads.